own premise, I mean, the vaccine program is a huge source of pride to so many people. But can you give a firm date for when hotel quarantine will start? And will you offer more help for people who just can't afford to isolate? As you well know, not everybody is entitled to the £500 payment that is available in some circumstances. And if not, aren't you leaving two big holes in our defences? As one of your own MPs said, the heating's on, but the window is wide open. And Professor Witte, with some of the measures improving, in your view, might there be a case for opening schools in England to all pupils again before the 8th of March, which is what Wales and Scotland look to be set to be doing? Laura, a couple of points. We have um, among the toughest to border uh, regimes now uh, anywhere in the world. And so, we're uh, uh, restricting as much as we can any risk of importing uh, into, this, into this country without totally secluding the UK economy, which we might have uh, 75% of its, uh, uh, its uh, 25% of, uh, of our food uh, comes from uh, the UK, uh, uh, cut ourselves off uh, completely. Uh, but what we can do uh, is say it's illegal to go on holiday, uh, which means it's illegal to go on holiday, it's illegal to come to this country. If you do come here, uh, then uh, you will be, uh, be taken uh, and put in uh, special uh, accommodation. Uh, and the uh, uh, health secretary will be making a program about that uh, tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah, even if you're not coming, uh, you're coming into this country, even if you're a UK uh, national returning to this country, uh, just think what you've got to do. You've got to uh, take a test uh, 72 hours before flying. Uh, you've got to uh, do a, a passenger locator form. You can be kicked off a flight if that doesn't happen. Uh, and, so and then you've got to quarantine and, and you'll have the isolation food service on uh, your case uh, for, for 10 days. So uh, we, are, we are operating in a very tough uh, regime already. And uh, you know, within the limits of what is uh, possible, given that we're a, uh, a, a, an economy that depends on on trade and access to the to the world. Um, and uh, your, your second point was about uh, uh, test and trace and isolate. And uh, again, uh, yes, we do want to see more people uh, isolating and uh, and and doing the right thing. But overwhelmingly, uh, people are and uh, and have been. Uh, don't forget that in addition to the £500, there's a the £10,000 uh, fine uh, if you don't. In addition to all the other support that, we, uh, that we've offered uh, throughout the pandemic to help people uh, throughout the, uh, the pandemic. And N NHS Test and Trace is now reaching, I think, has a capacity of 800,000 a day. Uh, it's absolutely colossal. If you listen to uh, the, some of the, the uh, points that... that uh, Chris and, and I were making earlier on about what we've discovered about uh, the effectiveness of the, of the vaccine for children. Uh, the the, 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 the uh, 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 that is the importance of uh, NHS test and trace and, and uh, the vast capacity in this country now has the genomic sequencing. So, uh, the short answer is, uh, yes, I do think people should, uh, uh, should self-isolate, but NHS test and trace is reaching 90% uh, of the countries, and, uh, and uh, the vast majority of them are doing the right thing. Um, and the question you asked me, I mean, the narrow question about dates is, is always going to be a matter of the ministers. Uh, but I, I, let me be a bit more helpful than that. There are very clearly two sides to this argument, uh, and both of them are true. There's an incredibly strong set of evidence, which I don't think anyone disputes, that being in school is good for children, it's good for their mental health, it's good for their long-term health, and obviously that's as well, that's not right, I think that's a very important part of it. So there are really clear medical and educational and societal reasons why being in school is absolutely right. Uh, and we are confident, and this actually goes back to the final chart I showed, that the risk for children to adults is incredibly low. Uh, so we consider it's a safe place for children to be as well as the right place for children. None of that is disputed by the way. On the other side, and this is also not disputed actually, is that uh, we, have had, you know, we were 
managing to hold the line in his own third place in England. He's got the seven line. He's in the two which is more transmissible than I think the evidence about his ring. We had to unfortunately do some additional things, which included the closure of schools, to pull down the incredibly high rates of uh, increasing that up to the very high rate we've now apparently got at the moment. Now the rates are now coming down, but they're still incredibly high, and if we were to start to take off again from the very high levels we are at the moment, the NHS would get back into trouble extraordinarily fast. So it's essential that people carry on social distance as they are, but some of these additional measures, like schools, are also very important. Now the point where, in a sense, those two balance, where we think we feel confident enough that the line can be held with the schools open, uh, to make sure that those first set of things, that the benefits to children are there, is, is a difficult judgment, and that's one that which fundamentally is one for ministers. But those two sets of arguments, I don't think I'll dispute it very clearly. It's really just a matter of when is exactly the right moment to balance it. Thanks very much, Laura. Carl, then. Thank you, Prime Minister. I give what we've just heard. I think I want to ask you the schools question then. I mean, the vaccination program is going so well. We've got so much good news today. Are you